I love how much of a bro Aquaman is. Like, he goes around with his attitude that's like, Yeah, my man! Like, I want his catchphrase now to be just be a long, drawn out, Bill and Ted style, Whoa! So in a world full of mixed reviews with Batman vs Superman not living up to expectations and Wonder Woman exceeding expectations, can the finally long-awaited Justice League movie live up to what we as fans want it to be? Let's get into it. So the Justice League movie is set after Batman vs Superman by this point Superman has been dead for quite a while, and Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, played by Ben Affleck, knows that there is an impending invasion about to happen from another world, and he sets out to bring together a group of like-minded superheroes to battle the impending invasion. But will they be enough without Superman on their team? So this is kind of a tricky one to review, actually, because the Justice League film itself, as everyone knows, has been plagued by problems on numerous occasions. Firstly, Zack Snyder, very understandably, due to a family tragedy, had to step down from directing duties, at which point Joss Whedon took over as director and did a whole bunch of reshoots, including calling Henry Cavill back from his latest job on the new Mission Impossible movie where he had grown a moustache to shoot with, and he was not allowed to shave it, so they had to digitally CGI out his moustache for all of the reshoots. And that was just one lot of reshoots. Apparently there were quite a lot of others that Joss Whedon wanted to do to improve upon the film that had been left to him to finish off. As well as this, Warner Brothers put a cap on the time limit of the film of being two hours. Now, considering that there's a lot to handle in a Justice League film, giving them two hours with which to wrap up the whole thing is kind of a little bit like saying, I want you to bake an intricately tiered cake, but guess what? I'm gonna give you half the usual time that you would usually want to do it in in which to complete that. Even though I personally would have wanted to see a little bit more from the Justice League film in certain places, in a way, using that two hour marker gave them a very distinct two halves to the film. The first hour, bringing all of the team together, meeting all of the characters, establishing who they are. The second half, fighting things. Fight, fight, action, little bit of drama, more fight, and that's kind of what you want to see. You want to see these big action set pieces in a Justice League movie. And the second half of this film has all of that in it. And the other part of it is that keeping it to that shortened time structure means that the plot is actually very straightforward. There's nothing too complex about it. Again, both good and bad. And while the story does almost entirely revolve around Batman and Wonder Woman bringing together this team of superheroes, it does mean that the bad guy of the piece, Steppenwolf, who for all intents and purposes is essentially a video game character. I mean, he's the most CGI'd thing that I've possibly ever seen since half of Lord of the Rings films. It does mean that Steppenwolf takes a very back seat in the entire film. He's great when you are watching him as he provides something to be fought against and to provide a bad guy for the peace, but as soon as he's not there, he's just entirely forgotten about. And you move on with the plot with the main characters. And again, this is both a good and bad thing because you want the plot to focus on Batman and the Justice League coming together because that's what you've come to the film to see. But equally so, you kind of want to have a decent villain to the piece. Something that's a little bit more compelling, something that's a little bit more driven. And instead we get kind of a bit of a two-dimensional, bland, blasé, disposable character. Now for the good points of the film, I really loved the characterizations of the main members of the Justice League in this film. Each one has a little bit of something going on that, yeah, they probably could have spent an entire film setting up for them, but instead they get a little bit of exposition and it makes you want to find out more, which is actually a very clever choice. I really enjoyed Barry Allen in this film. I didn't think I would. Instead, he's kind of the 
charismatic comic relief who's just eagerly itching to be a part of the team in this film. And there is one brilliant line between him and Batman where he's feeling doubts about himself being on the team and hasn't faced anything like this before, which again tells you this is very early on in the Flash's superhero career. He hasn't yet fought a whole lot of other people. He's mainly fought petty criminals, probably. But Batman gives him this one inspiring line, and it really sums up for me what Batman is in this film and what it should be having this kind of mentor and protege relationship between him and Barry Allen in the film. And it's really great moment. Cyborg it doesn't get all that much in this film, but he is an integral part of the structure of the plot because a lot of it revolves around him and what he knows and his knowledge because essentially he has himself been partly created by a mother box. And that's one of the things that Steppenwolf is after in this film. He's after three mother boxes, which he brings together to create the unity of mother boxes, which essentially will terraform the Earth into Apocalypse. So as far as his character goes, we don't get too much on him, but he is an essential part of the story. And I quite liked that, that you see him coming around to what he now is. It's like he's coming to terms with the fact that he won't ever really be human again, but he can still make a difference. And that was a cool thing to see. Ultimately, despite a few flaws in the film that were pretty obvious from the start, namely some dodgy CGI, namely some time restraints, and namely some reshoots, Justice League was still an enjoyable watch and I definitely think it's worth checking out. It's not got some great reviews, but it was never going to be as structurally sound as Wonder Woman was when you're dealing with so many other characters as well. So on that basis, Justice League gets three and a half stars from me. It's well worth a watch. It's not as bad as a lot of people have been batting about at the moment, so it's worth the time to go and see it and enjoy it. And just remember that it is essentially just part of the ride. So Justice League, have you seen it? What do you think of it? Do you agree with the critics or do you agree with the fans? And what characters would you like to see in future upcoming movies? Also, what do you think Aquaman's catchphrase should be? Because I still think it should be, whoa. All comments are welcome in the comments section below. Let's talk nerdy. As always, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here and you want to see more in the future, don't forget that you can subscribe and click right here to see more in the future. And until that point, I will see you next time.